You're forecasting slightly weaker output this year from last. Tell us what the outlook is now. Yeah, the outlook is in bet uh, between 1.8 and 2 million ounces of, of gold. Uh, the important thing is that we're in a process of building and growing the business. So as we get our growth projects uh, finalized, uh, the first reports come out to September. It, um, it really should help us improve on that profile as we go forward over time. Now, you're sitting on a lot of cash. I know you've increased your dividends for six straight years right now. Some people would look at that and say, why not more? Well, I think it's always going to be a balance about where the best deploy the cash. I mean, we want to reward our shareholders, which is why we increased right. the dividend uh, for the period on period for 120%. But as I was saying before, we're trying to expand our mind. We're expanding our media mind. We're expanding the Lahir mine. We're uh, building a mine at Haveron uh, in WA. We're building uh, a new mine in, uh, in um, Canada. So if you take all those capital commitments into account, it's a balance of giving the right distribution to shareholders while maintaining that strong balance sheet as we uh, build and grow the business. I guess that's the balance. Uh uh, understood. When it, and when it comes to all the capex, if you could give a number to us in terms of just the capacity that you're looking to get online these next couple of years, what would that be? Well, the studies will determine exactly what those final numbers will be. Uh, these right. ones that are coming out in the next a few months, and we'll have a much clearer picture. Uh, but our balance sheet has deliberately been made extremely strong over the last couple of years to prepare for this growth surge. And we've just been talking about how in the first half of this year, Sandy, everyone, well, most people were saying, look, there, it, it, it's so positive in the sector right now. This is the beginning of a commodity super cycle. That sort of chatter seems to be dying down of late, whether it's the dollar moves, a Fed that's beginning to taper or at least announcing that they might taper. What do you think is the key risk that's getting in the way of, of this super cycle from actually continuing? I, I, th I think the... Uh... The, the super cycle, whether it happens or not, I mean, the principle we run our business on is high margins. And this is where the all in sustaining cost is so important for our business. That regardless of the gold price, that we're still making a lot of cash, that's really important. And the other thing is our increasing exposure to cost. With where the world is headed in terms of our climate risk and what we have to do, copper is a key element of that. And our exposure to copper was 22% over the last year in terms of revenue, and that's going to increase because if you look at our expansion project, KD will produce more copper, Red Chris will produce more copper, and you've got Wafi Goldpoo sitting in the wings, which we're now in discussions with about uh, the ICE, PNG government. These are all, uh, and even Haveron in WA, these all have copper. So that copper gold mix, I think, is really good for any business going forward, but, you know, certainly for a gold company. And I think that's, and the margins, uh, irrespective of whether there's a super cycle or not, is what's going to drive our earnings going forward. Sandeep, uh, we've been asking a lot of CEOs and their thoughts on, you know, what their plan B, plan Cs are in terms of if we do get this Delta variant really causing a lot more disruptions. I want to get your thoughts on where you are in that conversation and any sort of plans that you might have that obviously you don't want to put in place. What would be the worst case scenario for you at this point in time in terms of disruptions, potential disruptions to operations? I, th I think the first thing to say there, David, is we've done an extremely good job, both as new as an in industry in keeping uh, a lid on COVID. None of our operations have, uh, have come to a stop uh, since it started. Mm. Uh, the Delta is something that we're all worried about. <laughs> at, at the moment, uh, we're not seeing Delta uh, pervasive where our current assets are, and we've kept COVID out of them. Um, but I think our protocols are very stringent. We've gone back up to the highest level of alert. And I think the principles that we've got in place, people and the support of our communities will help us uh, you know, keep Delta out of our business. Priority being, however, the safety of our people and our community. And Sandeep, I just want to ask you about climate because, uh, you know, everyone's talking about their ESG efforts right now. Uh, we, we, our Bloomberg Intelligence came out with some of the, these carbon scores. And it, it does show that most miners are still falling short in terms of cutting their carbon emissions to achieve the UN's goal. Newcrest kind of sits in the middle of the pack. Mm. What more can you tell us about how you can boost your ESG efforts at this point? 
ESG is a big focus uh, for us now, which wasn't the case uh, to this level five years ago, I can tell you. And then climate is a big aspect of that. The initial target of 30% reduction in intensity by 2030, we're well underway with uh, a renewables contract that we're entered into for our KDMI. And we'll seek to build on that measures of all our business in order to, um, uh, in order to go forward. Uh, but we've also committed to net zero by 2050, and we've put a small okay. task force together, map our pathway to uh, to net zero by 2050. 